film Midnight in Paris, my favorite parts of the movie were his gorgeous images of Paris. The opening shots are some of the most beautiful I've seen of the city ever since my illness led me to living part-time in Paris. After over 19 years of living mostly housebound in my home city, Seattle, the chance to bask in a city as magnificent as Paris thrills me, even on the days when I'm housebound. Some of my favorite haunts in Paris happen to be near some Midnight in Paris filming locations, so let me take you on a tour of them. In one scene of the movie, main characters Gil and Inez, a Californian couple engaged to be married, wander through the garden of the Rodin Museum. Their French tour guide, by the way, is played by Carla Bruni, who is the real First Lady of France. At one time, the museum was the home of artist Auguste Rodin until his death in 1917. Today it houses his artworks. Just a 10 minute walk from the museum on Rue de Babylone lies one of the more unusual of my favorite Paris haunts. La Pagode is a small movie theater inside an Asian style pagoda. There you'll also find a cafe in its tiny secret garden. The theater sometimes plays American films. When I enter the garden at the pagoda, I feel as if I've stepped into another world. Another favorite haunt of mine where I also feel as if I've suddenly stepped into a distant world is a cafe located near several other sites in Woody Allen's movie. Some scenes in the movie were shot on a street behind the Pantheon in the Latin Quarter of Paris on Rue de la Montagne Sainte Genevieve. It's where Gil takes a walk at night, and when he stops to rest, a vintage car pulls up and a man in a tuxedo invites Gil to get in for what will become a surreal evening in which he meets writers and artists who lived in 1920s Paris. Walk up this short street and you'll see the church of Saint-Étienne du Mont, where Gil seeks comfort. The church's interior can be stunning in the late afternoon when light streams through the windows and illuminates the finely carved stone choir screen and staircase. Not far from these sites, you'll find a cafe I love located at Paris's oldest mosque on Rue Geoffroy Saint-Hilaire. Step into the garden courtyard of La Mosquée Café with its geometric blue and white Islamic tile-lined walls and tables and savor Moroccan pastries and mint tea. You can also take tea in their interior dining room or eat couscous at mealtimes. At certain hours, you can even relax in the mosque's hammam or steam bath and get a massage. When I'm in the neighborhood and want to hang out and experience daily Parisian life, I walk five minutes away to the Arène de Lutèce or the Arena of Lutèce on Rue des Arènes. Here lies the site of Paris's largest Gallo-Roman ruin, built in the 3rd century AD, an amphitheater where up to 15,000 spectators used to watch gladiator combats. Today, Parisians in the neighborhood use the arena as a park, but it's also the headquarters of a gravel bowling club. Also in this part of the city, along the banks of the Seine River, you can stroll along the Quai de Tournelle, opposite the island of Saint Louis, where actor Owen Wilson took his walk. I love going to the river bank just east of it on a Friday summer night and heading to Square Tino Rossi, where Parisians gather to dance. The music is recorded, the view spectacular, and everyone is invited. Another filming location near my favorite haunts lies in the northern part of the city in the Montmartre neighborhood. On Rue de Chevalier de la Barre, you'll find the staircase where Gil woos Adriana, an artist's mistress. I love wandering the surrounding hilly streets behind the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur. My meandering becomes enchanting if I happen upon Mr. Paolo Provenzano, an improvisational dancer who lives in the neighborhood who performs on the streets in his tuxedo. 
I love the message of his YouTube performance videos that life is precious, so don't waste it. A 15-minute walk away on Rue Colincourt, you'll find Gontran Charrier, a boulangerie offering delicious baguettes and whole grain breads, as well as pastries, croissants, sandwiches, and quiche. You can enjoy a snack or light lunch while sitting at their bar along the window as you watch the world going by on the street. Last but not least, another Midnight in Paris filming location near some of my favorite Paris haunts is the Orangerie Museum. It's rather hidden away on the edge of the Tuileries Garden. Gil and Inez were filmed in its oval galleries, which are hung with Claude Monet's water lily paintings. One of my favorite haunts nearby is the Oso oh Parisian tea salon called Angelina on the Rue de Rivoli. There I not only enjoy the food, but also its late 1800s Belle Epoque interior. Angelina also serves lunch, but they are perhaps best known for their thick, rich hot chocolate called Le Chocolat Africain and their Mont Blanc pastry, which is a confection of hard meringue, whipped cream, and candied chestnut cream. The line to get in for tea can be long, however. Breakfast tends to be the least crowded. Just a five minute walk from Angelina lies another oh so Parisian spot which I enjoy called Colette on Rue Saint Honoré. The eminently fashionable and stylish boutique is unlike anything I've seen in the US. It's a concept store, meaning that it sells a range of products relating to lifestyle, all of them beautifully designed. There you'll find everything from watches to art books, the latest trends in clothing, and even over 100 different types of mineral waters. The boutique prices tend to be high, but it's fun to visit just for the experience. As I straddle a life between Paris and Seattle, I can't help but agree with Woody Allen's underlying message in the movie about the often held illusion that past eras of history were easier, better times. Because I find Paris to be an often spectacular, bewitching city just the way it is. To find the addresses of these filming locations and my favorite haunts nearby, go to my website and look for the blog post titled, Let Me Show You the Beautiful Sights in the Movie Midnight in Paris.